very very good morning and uh, i hope um, you all are doing well so let's begin with the most well known and well versed topic among all that is uh, water soluble vitamins so what is this water soluble vitamins or what is this vitamins in the first place let us go and dig a little bit in the history it's quite fascinating you see way back in around 1889 when a dutch physician by name christian eikman he was actually busy finding the reason for beriberi okay now beriberi was during then it was an very rampant endemic and had claimed a lot of lives uh, li lives of people and the typical thing that they noticed was that it was common in southern parts of the world especially the asia covering india sri lanka which was called as ceylon earlier and uh, indonesia japan and china could you find a link among these countries yes it is nothing but these all were the rich rice eating population the white rice eating population so they found that the people were succumbing to a disease and it was called beriberi in some places to kakhe in some places to ceylon disease in some other places yet they all presented typically the same later on in 1906 nearly about uh, you know after 25 years or so only an english uh, biochemist by name gowald hopkins he realized that it was not related to virus bacteria fungi or any other parasite but was in fact related the link was due to some deficiency in the food intake and he called these as the accessory food factors only later on casimir funk in 1911 he was also a polish biochemist who proposed the name vitamins because when they extracted the structure they could find some amines and these were all the vital substances required by the body for sustaining uh, life by the time they realized that not actually every vitamin they extracted had a mine the word had picked up really very fast until today we address these vital substances as vitamins somewhere two years down the line say later they could isolate crystals from the extracts of the rice polishing or should i say the husk and they could find that this actually had the ingredient which could cure the beriberi and they called this one as a anti beriberi factor later on they went on to test this compound they found that it started curing the disease in the birds and finally we got our first vitamin and that was vitamin b1 it was later named as thymin which is spelled and pronounced as saying t h i a m i n e or t h i a m i n now very soon they also realized that there are two different class of vitamins which have a little different properties they classified them as water soluble vitamins and fat soluble vitamins how are they different the water soluble once absorbed was directly into the blood whereas fat soluble had to be absorbed through chylomicrons and there is the liver they could water soluble could transport freely whereas fat soluble always required some carrier and water soluble didn't actually wasn't actually stored and was excreted through the urine whereas the fat soluble vitamins could be stored for a long period of times in the fat cells so when the water soluble could not be stored the toxicity was comparatively less on higher dosage in water soluble vitamins however the toxicity was more in the fat soluble vitamins because it could be stored the requirements obviously became more frequent for water soluble vitamins and hence the deficiencies are also particularly more common with water soluble vitamins when compared to fat soluble vitamins which 
requirement happens to be once in a week or so. Let us move ahead with this brief history to talk about timing in our next video. Thank you.